And I'm back to playing more Border Princes, more Valmer Gausser's campaign here. So, where we left off, we had just fought a little battle against old Thrud here, who had stepped out of Myrmidons to attack us. And I'm just going to mention here that I am incredibly stupid. It did not occur to me until just a couple days ago that Myrmidons is in a geographically kind of analogous place. I believe that's the correct term. Geographically analogous place to real-world Athens. And Myrmidia is the very clear Warhammer version of Athena. So Myrmidons is just a very lazy... Well, not lazy, but... A very clear play on Athens, the city of Athens, named for the strategy goddess Athena. And so is Myrmidons to Myrmidia. Which makes it even clearer that the western border princes are supposed to be Warmer's version of Greece. In case Vardanos and Argalus didn't make it clear enough as well. Then when you get into the eastern border princes, I suppose they're supposed to be more Slavic, more, I don't know, Balkans? Anyways. Let's see, if we were to attack them... Oh my, what a joke of a siege that would be. Now, we'll go ahead and auto-resolve it, sure. I'll play a siege at some point, but not that one. That one would be too much of a joke. And we will occupy Myrmidons. We are coming quite close to uniting the border princes here. Argalus and Vardanos are the last two places. Vardanos, that's going to take a while. We're going to have to either confederate... Ol... Gashnag, or we're going to have to just purchase it off of him. And we got the Armor of Destiny for Mr. Gausser himself. Plus 5 armor, 5% 5 physical resist, 10% ward save. That is an excellent ancillary. Sigma. No skill gains, though. Alright. Okay, Zvorik has a garrison. Yep, that's how I built it. Myrmidons starts with a port. Yeah, we are still, we are still Southern Realm, so that's still quite good. Now, over here, back in Matorka, we need to build something. Let's see, we will be building a garrison. That way, we do not need to have Gausser sitting around babysitting the Border Princes. We can send him off to other countries to do other things. Probably, we're going to start fit, uh, futzing around in the Badlands. Probably helping the Dwarfs, I imagine. We can take a lot of the Badlands settlements and sell them off to the Dwarfs for a pretty penny. And they'll be our friends, too. It's really a win-win. They get a settlement, so, you know, who's complaining? Well, the goblins, but who cares? <laughs> and the more I secure the border with the dwarfs, the more access I'll get to dwarf units. Oh, you know what? I'm dumb. Did I... Was I earlier in past recording saying that I only get one dwarf warrior with great weapons? That's blatantly false. Uh, border Princes get access to Dwarf Warriors with and without great weapons by default, if memory serves. And uh, then I believe Tylea gets access to Dwarf Warriors without great weapons by themselves, where they do not get access to the great weapon variant. Let's check the... Uh, ooh, we got the Alcatani Fellowship. Might go ahead and recruit that in a second, but first let's check. Do we not get Dwarf Warriors from one of these building trees? Maybe I'm misremembering. Maybe that was a Warmer 2 thing, because with... Uh, the move from Warmer 2 to Warhammer 3, there was a push to make the Southern Realms roster more unique. It used to be that you had the base of the Southern Realms roster was Empire Spearmen, which is not too terribly exciting, and Kataf wanted to give the Southern Realms roster a more unique identity. So I think he probably got rid of the Dwarf Warriors. That, that, that does make sense. It's not the end of the world. We're already on pretty good terms with the Dwarfs, so we'll just make deals with them if we want Dwarf units. Speaking of making deals, let's see. Who's ready to play ball here? Tylea might be interested in some deals. We'll look into that eventually. I might want to look into dealing with Sartosa just to prevent there from being a problem on my west border. Alright, let's see. We're going to be stuck right here on this little passage. Whoop. Hmm. Okay, that worked out a little bit strangely. Oh, is there not a land passage here? Oh, there is. Okay. Okay, that was a little bit weird, but alright. Let's go ahead. We'll... There's no point in channeling. We don't have any uh, wizards in our company. Let's go ahead and get put into ambush stance. I'll get the Alcatani Fellowship later. 
Uh, the ogres are gonna be recruiting. It's probably better that I force march. Yeah. Let's see. How do the how do how does Sartosa feel about Argalis? About the ogres? She doesn't like them too well, but she's not at war. By the way, that's another mod I have. Nanu's Pirates of Sartosa. Adds more living units to the Sartosa roster. Changes how they work. Makes them feel less uh, odd and out of place. Let's go ahead and zip on over here. Now, Gashnag's coming back probably to also fight Argalis. Yeah, he also wants Argalis. He might be able to take it next turn. Well, he's in Force March stance. He probably won't be able to. I can probably take it before he does. And we don't have anything else to do. Oh, skill points. Yes, we do have skill points. Let us see. We can't get the melee chapter one, can we? Apparently we can. All right. Well, I'll take that. Sure. No, I can't. Okay. Never mind. Let's see. Well, we've got more red points to invest. Let's see. I nearly said ingest for some reason. I'm having a weird day. My brain ain't working. Increased leadership for hand, weapon, pike, and halberd units. Increased charge bonus for spear, lance, and great weapon units. Hmm, not too shabby. Increased leadership. That, what does that go up to? Plus six leadership for hand, weapon, pike, and halberd units. Yeah, that would get the pikemen even closer to being practically unbreakable. Increased missile resistance for all melee units. Increased missile strength for all missile units. Hmm. What does that go up to? Plus 10% missile resist for all melee units. That's pretty good. Plus speed for all units. Ooh, that's not too shabby. Increased weapon strength and armor. Hmm. This is all pretty good. I'm liking the sound of Missile Resist. But we're going to be fighting against Greenskins. Missile Resist isn't too good against Greenskins. Perhaps better to go for Speed? Hmm, they're going to outnumber us. Speed is less valuable in situations where you're outnumbered. Let's go with Increased Weapon Strength for Spear, Pike, Halberds, and Lances. Or Increased Leadership and Charge Bonus. Hmm, these are interesting questions. There's also the question of increased growth, because growth is really good for Southern Realms if memory serves. But probably to get better use, probably more important to get better usage out of what units I have. The red line is pretty well always just hard to turn down. We'll go with, yeah, hammer and anvil. Increased leadership is going to be nice. It's going to be valuable. And speaking of, what are the stats looking like on these militia spearmen? That's pretty good stats considering how cheap militia spearmen are. The Southern Realms can really, like, they can draw blood from a stone, but they can draw blood they can draw blood from a boulder if they so please. <laughs> it's gonna be fun once we get there. Let's see. And Miss Emil Shielder, let's see. What do you... We'll keep going. Training. Yeah, training. I'd like more XP. Alright, and now we'll go ahead and wrap the turn. Hmm. Probably, yeah, what I should do is I should help Tylea deal with Aranessa. I'm not making any deals here, no. I should help Tylea deal with Aranessa to keep my western border from getting too iffy, and then I should start to deal with the orcs and goblins. Uh, Gr Thorgrim is probably going to need my help. Skarsnik and Wurzag usually both end up being big problems. Probably would be important for me to keep Gashnag alive as well. He'll be a big holdout in the Badlands. It'll keep them from threatening me too much. Alright, Mr. Gausser, let's go ahead and start hitting up yes, the settlement of Argalus. And we will not be getting Gashnag's help here. But nonetheless, this should be the last of the Ogre Battles for a good minute, and thank God I was getting a little sick of them. Probably be more interesting to fight them if we uh, end up seeing them in the late game. Unlikely, Grimgore will probably wipe out all the ogres and take the mountains of Morn, but, you know, on the off chance the ogres make it. Alright, let's occupy. The Blood Maw have been obliterated. Now let's give Argalus a garrison. And after that, let's see, first, do we want to recruit anything for Valmer Gausser? I am curious about going ahead and taking the Alkatani Fellowship. Let's see, the Alkatani Fellowship, let's pin you. What? are your stats. Pretty good. 40 melee attack on a pikeman unit that has 120 men is fantastic. Plus they have formation attack, so increased melee defense as long as they stay in one group. Push a pike, so if they're winning a fight and they're above 50% health, they 
hat deal 20% more. They're going to hit 20% more often. And encourage. That's right. They have encourage. Excellent. Hmm. Well, let's do a little bit of unit merging here. There we go. To make a spot in the army. Curious about sitting around the 17 unit mark for now. And saving a bit of cash. Let's grab the Alcatani Fellowship. The first regiment of renown. As that is another thing that really sets the Southern Realms apart from the vanilla races in Total War Warhammer. The Regiment of Renown selection that the Southern Realms get access to is exceptional. Each of the Regiments of Renown is really special in their own way and really quite quality. So I'm glad to have grabbed the Akatani Fellowship. Look at those stats. Those are so good. Oh, 81 leadership. Whew. Pretty good for a human. Okay, let's see. Man, Warhammer is racist against humans. Anyways... Katakan Gazar, we've got the grazing pastures. Let's get a garrison up, and let's get those garrison, those grazing pastures even higher. 150 income, going up to 200, which is pretty far from shabby for a building that also provides loads of growth. So let's go ahead and get all that up. And we will test, let's see, test the waters for a bit of di diplomacy. Karak Norn is good to make a deal. They're at war with the Wood Elves right now. Oh, the Wood Elves are going to be a problem. That is one thing that they're going to be a problem. Yes. Uh, we will, for now, we will go ahead and make a deal with Brock Iron Pick. Sure. Just because he gets along well with the Empire, and I'd like to keep the Empire on my good side. Maybe I'll take them over in the distant future. Who knows? But it's unlikely. A trade agreement with Tylea. Oh, wow. Ikit Claw and Aranessa are laying waste to Tylea. Let's avoid making deals right now just so we don't piss off Ikit Claw from the jump. Has Ikit Claw taken Moreliano? If he has, that's going to be a problem. I may have to deal with this Ikit Claw and the Skaven before I deal with the Greenskins, which is not going to be great because Ikit Claw is a serious problem. Hmm. Alright, let's go ahead and end the turn. Now, if I do end up taking Sartosa, that will be quite good, though, as I do remember I took Sartosa in my Estalia campaign, and Sartosa is a very, very good settlement, especially for Southern Realms. Uh, Varezzo has fallen, so it might be that Tylea has been wiped out as a faction, in which case I got some problems. Hmm, you yeah, this, this could be interesting. Dahlia gone. Ooh, the Shield of Patolos. Alright, let's go ahead and alleviate some of the pressure here. Oh, that's a pretty intimidating army from the jump. I mean, that's a lot of guns, but... The cannons. I've never played the actual... I've never actually played with Nanu Sartosa. I don't know just how intimidating they can really be, but... Sheesh. Ah. I don't think we can hold this territory. We could sack Lucini and then run back home to be safe. But we'd be risking Argalis. It'd probably be wiser to wait until Argalis develops as a settlement. But I think right now Sartosa is relatively cool with us, right? We might... It might be smart for us to just play this political game... Yeah, it might be smart for us to make deals with them in the future. We'll hold off on doing anything towards Aranessa for the moment. Yeah, it's probably just the wise thing to do. Alright, let's go ahead and go into Force March. Let's not sit around. Let's go ahead and be active so we're generating XP and we're making money. Probably what we'll want to deal, deal with next is the Broken Nose Greenskins up here in the vaults. If we hand those borders off to Belagar then Belagar will keep our western border secure, at least somewhat, from Ikit to the west. They'll have to go around the Apachini Mountains. Let's see. Plus 5% upkeep in the army, but plus 5 physical resist for all units. How many of my units are rank 4 or above? Not a lot, so we'll hold off on that upgrade for now, though that does sound really good. Protector. Guardian on a lord. That's interesting. You don't often see that. Still, that would be quite good. Hmm. We'll hold off on that for now, though. Want to keep down the hammer and anvil path. Hmm. 
And we do have buildings to upgrade. Let us see. Achendorf can be upgraded to Tier 3. Let's go ahead and go for that. Good stuff to be had there. Morgan Bernhardt is down to... Oh, no, he is not. I it, I saw this meter, and I didn't see how little of it, it was actually the black space. I thought it was all gray space, so... Yeah, Ovian's Grudgebringers here. Yes, they are a cool faction who will be roaming around the world helping all the forces of good. So it would be nice to give them some money and keep them funded. Sure, let's offer you a small go. Let's not... We'll hold off on that until I have uh, more money to throw around. Because as the Southern Realms, you will eventually end up making enough money that you can start throwing money around at your various friends. And that can be very profitable if they are able to keep the peace and keep the trade flowing freely. But that phase of the game has not come yet. Now, where is old Rind of the Broken Noses heading off to right now? He's an underway stance, but I don't know what he's up to. We're probably going to end up having to work quite a bit to help Belagar maintain our western border, because he's going to be dealing with both Ikit Claw and Durthu in time. Because, you know, Durthu's fun to play as a good guy when you play as him. But when the AI plays Durthu, he is a maniac. He is, there's a reason that people tend to call him Tree Hitler. He is violent and he wants to watch everybody die. He does not care. Oleg Hertvig is back from the hospital after he somehow pulled a leg, he pulled a hamstring or something. Oh, it, give a tra trade agreement. Sure, I can do that. And let's go ahead. And most battles won with a single hero. Uh, it needs to be a single hero character. No one else. Okay, and it gets the armor of fortune. Let's not have Oleg join in Gausser's army, then. Let's go ahead and stay away from Gashnag's borders. Let's not get in there. Don't want to mess with him. He seems useful for the moment. Let's get Myrmidons upgraded into a more quality settlement. And let's get a garrison in there when the time comes. Emilia Imbleshielder is... Ready to go ahead and let's see. I got her more training. Let's get her the impassioned skill. Keep pumping that melee defense up. Spear character, she's probably going to be pretty good with defense by the end of it. Our techs, let's see. Classical military studies. Yeah, yeah, we're getting close on that. Five turns, not too shabby. We're going to need to be rolling up into the mountains to go ahead and get that secured. Now, I don't know... Oh! Belagar handled it himself. Uh, good on you, Belagar. Thank you. Hopefully he stays on good terms with Aranessa, but who knows. It does seem like Nanu's Sartosa mod chilled Aranessa out, because ordinarily as a Vampire Ghost faction she'd be pretty aggro, but she seems cool with me for now, so hopefully she stays cool. And I'll support whatever Sartosan revolution there is going on in Tylea. Now, if I were to start striking across the Badlands to restore them to the Dwarfs, where would I go? Oh, Zavorik. We have reports of a hedge wizard operating in the area. He seems to be keeping to himself, and yet is known to help the local populace in everyday issues. He could be a useful asset for, asset for our troops. But the Northerners often execute these untrained mages on sight for fear of turning them into some horror or other. What would you choose? We should send someone capable of discerning if the individual is dangerous or not. They can't be all that dangerous, can they? We can use a wizard. We can definitely use a wizard. Veteran Francisco, a gentleman with an extremely deep voice. Oh, we got a little bit of chaos undivided corruption in all provinces. Whoopsie doodles. But we also got an enchanted tarot deck. Hey, hey! Hand-painted and stunning in its intricacy, the predictions of this deck are ones that are few are pleased to hear. But, hey, increases ambush defense chance and reduces enemy hero action success chance. Not too shabby. And recruit 30 new units. I'll that I don't think I'll be doing that anytime soon. Let's see. Well, we don't want to cross the cross the Black Seas for the moment. We'd rather not piss off Mr. Buckthorn there. So we'll keep the land routes. We'll zip on over to Berakvar. Maybe help take the Blood River Valley and switch that back to Berakvar's ownership. Oh, Birnoth Grundrak here. He's a pretty cool dude in the lore, and he's got a very amusing legendary hero from the Oh, I want to say it was just called, like, Dwarf Legendary Characters Collection. Hmm. What is the name of that? 
it does fe yeah mr torsten tree hacker there comes from it and among a few others if you put that into the steam workshop search bar it will likely bring it up you know i should probably just go ahead and make that uh workshop collection shouldn't i we'll send mr hertvig up to go ahead and scout out how things are going up north I'm going to assume the Broken Noses don't have any settlements left, because Belagar should start close to this settlement right here. If Belagar's doing well, it's really only a matter of time until he confederates Carrick Hearn, which will keep help to keep my northern border secure. I am going to have to, probably after dealing with a bit of the stuff going on in the Badlands, I'm probably going to have to deviate north to fight Vlad von Karstein, however, as he will be a problem for my northern border, and he will almost certainly sweep through much of the uh, landscape up there. The Chaos Corruption is going to be coming in quite strongly for a minute. I think that's just going to have it to be something we lump it and deal with. Not ideal, but we'll live with it. It'll cause a momentary public order issue and nothing else, really. Hmm. I should play a Grudgebringers campaign again soon. I played a Grudgebringers campaign fairly recently. Well, a couple months ago, but that was, I think, the most recent campaign I've played. Not too long after the Grudgebringers mod was released by the OVN team. And, yeah, it is just so much fun. Like, it's almost a reverse Warriors of Chaos. You're rampaging around the world, fighting the forces of evil and turning the world good. Kind of the opposite of the Warriors of Chaos, laying waste to all civilization and slaughtering the innocent. It's very fun. Research eight technologies. That's going to be a while. Ready. Let's see. We got. Uh, we don't want to trespass on Berkvar territory, so we'll have to pass by Akendorf. Federer and Francisco, however, the dwarfs are not going to care too much if he goes running around in their territory a little bit, so we can look around. Now, I wonder how much the dwarfs of Berkvar will be willing to pay for the Varenka Hills and Badak de Wazbug. Might have to sell them off to Karak as. Uh, Karaz Akrak, excuse me, instead. What does the army here look like? Snorko Ol Weirdy. I'm going to bet this is a pretty substantial army. The Greenskins can get a lot of Orc Boys early on, and Orc Boys are not a bad unit to get in the early game. Alright, and we have also have not moved Mr. Hertvig. Let's see. I wonder if he's related to the uh, Elector Count of Ostermark, that guy. Wolfram. Wolfram Hertvig. Yep, Karak Buftar is under the possession of... Belagar, and so far none of the Wood Elves are really that mad at me. Though I have noticed, okay, yeah, there's a another one of the mods I have, the uh, Blood Dragons mod that flushes out the Blood Dragons and adds Wallach Harkon as a faction leader. Uh, also adds a Blood Keep mechanic for them, and not really for anyone else. Sometimes it can cause weird things with mods, where if you're not playing the Blood Dragons, you'll still see this icon. But, yeah, it's understandable. There used to be one mod that caused that to come on very strongly, but they fixed it later on. I forget what it was. Maybe it's back in Warmer 2. You know, in Warmer 2, I don't think that you could fix that at all. I think that if you added a icon to the settlement uh, little banner there, it just stayed there for everybody, regardless of what race you're playing. It would definitely be easier to hit Barak de Wazbag than the Varenka Hills, but we can probably ambush the orcs and goblins sitting out in the Varenka Hills. Guess we'll want to get closer and see what that army looks like, won't we? Let's go ahead and get out of Force March. Let's see, okay, yeah, a lot of orc boys, goblins... We got Nasty Skulkers. Not Nasty Skulkers are a problem for dwarfs, but Border Princes aren't going to care too much. And they also have a good couple Spider Riders, Wolf Riders, and Spider Hatchlings. Hmm. Alright, let's see. Didn't... Oh, these are supposed to be Forest Goblins, right? Creeping Death. These are the guys that, if you do not have Mixu's Legendary Lords, they start out in possession of the Forest of Gloom. But since I have Mixu's Legendary Lords on... The masks of the mask of Loek faction spawns in the Forest of Gloom under Whipwithil the Wild. So that's uh, that's 
change there, but that explains the sudden presence of forest goblin spider riders. Okay, Mr. Francisco actually can't pass through Barakvar. I guess that makes sense. It's a little bit of a choke point there. We'll get a little bit of scouting done on Snorko, though. And old Hurtvig, we don't want him to get too far from home. Let's... Because otherwise he'll just never get involved in an army. Send him back a little ways. We're burning through our money at a little bit of a small rate. Not not too much to worry about. If we upgraded Matorka, we would be able to make a good amount of money off that port. And for only 1,800 gold. That's gold and, that's money and growth. Not too shabby. So I'll upgrade Matorka and then I'll get access to the salt resource they have on offer as well. Sounds good to me. Hmm. Oh, Thorgrim's out here. With a not terrible army. A lot of quarrelers there. Not sure if they can really hold the many quarrelers. Hold the line for that many quarrelers. Too many missile units if you run the risk of being uh, surrounded. There is, of course, just going nuts with spamming missile units and hoping that you'll kill the army before they can make contact, which used to be the way to play the game. I believe it still is probably cheesing the way to play the game if you're a Legend of Total War sort. Though, missiles don't feel as strong in Warmer 3 as they did in Warmer 2, which I think is very good. Missiles were way too strong in Warmer 2. It felt silly running a melee army sometimes. Hmm. If I sell off the... Creeping Death Settlements. If I sell off the Blood River Settlements to Beric Var, that'll keep Beric Var alive. Where ordinarily Beric Var has a tendency to not live too long. Oh, Broken Nose are gone. But... Karazak Rack is probably the smarter friend to make in the long run. Hmm. Okay, in Auchendorf we have got a extra building slot. What do we want to put that towards? Orchards for wine production? I forgot that the that the Southern Realms could just make wine just out of thin air. But we can make money off of farms. And if the settlement reaches its highest tier, then they provide growth for adjacent provinces. Hmm. And of course, the industry just prints money on its own. Well, we're probably going to need control. So, let's start with, yeah, the orchards, which will eventually develop into the winery monopoly. And what do the roads do again? Increased income, growth, campaign movement range, uh, increased hero capacity for Huntsmasters. That is definitely a... That is definitely a little bit of an incompa incompatibility between the Southern Realms and Sigmar's heirs by Shodad and Willemson. But, ultimately, not really an issue. And then, of course, there's the Trading Depot, which we will want to invest in the longer this campaign goes. But, for now, let's get the Orchards rolling. Well? Nah, yeah, let's get them rolling. Yes. Old Gausser here. I'm not looking to have uh, this kind of discount army quite running so much anymore. Let's get some beefier units in here. Let's get a couple... Border Rangers sound good to me. We'll get them up. I'm curious about getting more light scouts, but I'll hold off on that for now. Let's have Mr. Francisco go up and start annoying Snorko. Let's see, what's a unit we would like to wound? Spider Riders, sure. Failure. Well, the main point of this was to see if we could get a better look at... No, we can't. Okay. Can't get a good look at what units they've got rolling here. The ability to see what the enemy army is before you attack it is an exclusive privilege of the AI, of course. Alright, Oleg Hertvig, let's get you somewhere closer to the front line so you don't just spend all day wandering around and breaking buildings like a hero who's been forgotten. Let's see, back in the west... Well, we're going to want to invest our money first in upgrading Zvorak or Argalis. Let's go for Argalis first. Argalis is going to be threatened by Western threats earlier than the rest of the Western Border Princes. 
You know, it's supposed to be in Warhammer lore that the Apachini Mountains protect Tylea from the insanity that's going on to the east. Oh, there's the western threat. From the insanity that the Apachini Mountains are supposed to protect Tylea from the insanity that goes on to the east in the Border Princes, the Badlands, and so on. But in truth, the Apachini Mountains are largely going to end up protecting us from the insanity of the West, as the Vampire Coast and the Skaven go nuts. I'm probably going to have to end up recruiting a second Lord just to sit in Argalis with a few units, just to keep that border from being too threatened. Though I think there's a very good chance Ikit will just simply underway his through his way past Belagar, in which case there's not really much I can do about that. That's just an advantage the Skaven get. Hmm. Okay, we've researched classical military studies. See here, we have to form up the troops into curved arrows and drive them deep into the enemy oblongs. What? Diagrams are clear. Yeah, plus 5 leadership when attacking. That's good. Plus 10% campaign movement range. That's good. Uh, might just be smart to turn Volmer Gausser around here. Which would be annoying, because we just... Can we get... Belagar to agree to a military access. There's no way. He, it would be way too expensive. We're going to have to turn Gausser west, I think. Well, no, war is inve inevitable on the east as well. So probably what would be smart here is... The garrison in Varenka Hills is not too impressive. If they, they're probably not going to attack Ackendorf, they're definitely not going to attack Ackendorf, because Ackendorf has an absolutely insane garrison. So probably what's smart here is, let's enter ambush stance. To strengthen the empire. And let's see if we can trespass in their territory and sneak right past. Attack Badag Dawazbag first. Then after that, we'll see about Branca Hills. Mr. Francisco will keep attacking random spiders. Go for it, brother. Oh, critical failure. He pulled a hamstring. Poor guy. Blew a quad. Happens a lot to these heroes. They're not very good at stretching before exercise. It's kind of embarrassing. Alright. Back in Myrmidons, we are going to need to invest in a garrison. Urgently. There we go. And we are running out of cash quickly. I need to be making war to make money. We're going to want to finish out the rest of this tree and get up to the Unsung Heroes tech. Which is not too shabby, because there are some good techs here. Self-Mead leader... Self-Mead? What? Self-Made leaders is a good one. Lord recruit rank, especially before I actually recruit any lords. Speaking of recruiting lords, let's go ahead and uh, not do what I just said. Let's recruit... Well, we can't afford to recruit a lane, Lord Norgalis. Oh, well. Maybe a wise idea to lease mercenary contracts just so I can make a bit of money here while I'm not doing too well. Starsnick is sieging Karazak Karak? Well, that's not great. How do you even get there? I have a lot of questions. I see I see a lot of light blue on the upper on the map the mini-map in the upper right here. So, Thorgrim's got some territory to him. But, what's going on? Okay. Let's say I wanted to attack Badag Dawazbag. I probably could, and pretty safely too. Oh, Thigan's errantry is down. Poor guys. Okay, this would be a decisive victory. Should I play it anyways? Probably better for me to avoid taking casualties here. Let's see. Let's look at the map. Oh, pretty bland map. Okay. Yeah, we can take the high ground, shoot down at them with cannons. It's a lot of goblins here. Goblins aren't going to be too good. Orc boys. Snorko old weirdy is not going to be... Oh, that's Largo Guy Gouger. Okay. Yeah. Not a too impressive army here. Not at all. So, I think we're going to be good. Just a lot of infantry but I think we'll be able to have it. We could probably send out the Border Rangers ahead of the rest of my army to skirmish. 
And if they think that they can send their wolf riders after me, then I send the Knights of the Light Scouts. Probably both. Sounds like a valid plan. Sure, let's go for it. Hmm. Should I send them out to skirmish? They'd probably be better off sitting on the flanks. I'll check if the Border Rangers have stalk. If they have stalk, they'd probably be better as a flanking unit. And as a matter of fact, this video is getting quite long in the tooth. So. <clears throat> I am going to go ahead, and once this loading screen stops, and we load into the battle, I am going to go ahead and cut the recording. So, folks, I'll see you later when we play this battle out. Later!